This is one of my favourite DC Locos, my Hudson and Delaware Alco PA1. It does have a nice little headlight, but it's a bit yellow because it's the old incandescent style and it doesn't have directional lights or even a rear light at all. Today I'm going to attempt a full LED light conversion and perhaps learn some science along the way. If I can fit it in this tiny brain, there's not a lot of room left. Stay tuned. Hello YouTubes. When it comes to installing LED bulbs, it's not quite as simple as removing the old incandescent bulb and popping in an LED bulb. Does not work like that. If you imagine you are running a 12 volt system, let's say that's 12 volts, but you only want to power a three volt LED, that much space in your voltage meter. You've got all this extra voltage, nine volts left, that has to be absorbed somewhere or your little three volt LED will just pop, gone forever. And that's where resistors come in and they look kind of like this. Resistors soak up that extra power and disperse it through heat. So you don't want a resistor that is too powerful because then you won't, it'll absorb too much and you won't get any light. If it doesn't absorb enough, then it, it gets too hot and it pops and chaos ensues. So I'm not going to go into the complete science behind it, but I'll give you a very brief overview or underview of how I've come up with the size of the resistor I require for my LEDs. To make life even more complicated, not all LEDs run at the same voltage. And you do have to check with the packaging or the, the data you get with your LEDs, what voltage they run. So these blue and white ones I have here, these ones run at between three volts and 3.2 volts. That's the white and the blue. The yellow and the green run between two volts and 2.2. And the red one requires even less, 1.8 to 2 volts. And you have to match the resistor you use with the LED you use. So there's a little bit of maths involved. Look up Ohm's law and you should be able to calculate the resistor depending on the LED you're going to use. The other thing you'll need to know is the amperage that these things draw. I actually couldn't find the data for these specific LEDs, but in general, they seem to be about 20 milliamps, so 0 0.02 amps. And that's what I'm going with. I've tested them, they seem to work. So let me go over to the rails because there's something else that you need to know about, which is actually going to trip me up a little bit when I want to wire a front or rear light and also what happens when it goes forwards and backwards. A DC controller on a DC track like this is kind of like a big adjustable battery. It will go from zero up to whatever your controller allows. In my case, 11.55. So let's say this battery is your controller. Obviously, it's not going to adjust it. But if I connect this battery to the rails, this train should move towards the battery. When you flick the switch forward reverse on your controller, all you're really doing is reversing the polarity. So if I now touch this to the track, the loco should go backwards, like so. Now, what you might notice here is, and I'll use the full power for this to save my little nine volt tester battery. If you look at the headlight on the loco, it's lighting up now, we're going forwards. When I switch it into reverse, the light is still on. Unfortunately, this won't work for an LED bulb. They work quite differently. Let me show you. So here's my little three volt LED with corresponding resistor. If I touch it on the tracks, bear in mind, we've kind of got a positive and a negative. It should light up, which it does. However, if I flick the switch in the controller into reverse, my LED goes off because LEDs are like a one-way valve. They don't work like the old incandescent bulbs that can work either way. They have to work in one direction, like so. Now, I'm sure there's all sorts of electricity I could use to get around that little problem, but bear in mind, I'm hoping to go DCC with this layout in the future. 
All I want for now is an LED headlight and maybe a red LED at the back. So I need to come up with a little idea that I've been brewing to get around our little one-way valve system. Basically, it's a positive-negative system, but it only flows one way in an LED. Rather frustrating, but let's get this loco apart and see what's inside and see how we're going to attach the LED for a start. So this is a good old Athern Blue Box, which I've found to be one of the easiest toy trains to work on. And to remove this, we just unclip it either side of the shell. You do need three fingers to do this. Sorry, two hands, many fingers. This particular one's a wee bit more fiddly to take apart because it's got those little stair things. And you don't want to break them. There we go. And with the body off, you can see how easy it is to get access to everything inside. Main thing I'm looking for is this bulb here, the little incandescent. So we have, oh wow, look at that. The um, <laughs> the ground wire on this is just wrapped around the chassis. I'm surprised that even worked. I need to fix that. And the positive is coming from there. So theoretically, all I have to do is connect the negative side. And on most LEDs like this, the short side of these these two bars here and the short side is the negative so i want the negative to go to the chassis and this one up to the positive so basically if i run this from the body there and that to there and apply some power and i could just use this battery for now let's turn it on its side and you'll see attach that to the positive Attach that to the negative, connect the battery to the wheels, and we should have a flickering LED. Hopefully you can see that. So that's the right way around. But also you'll notice the, the incandescent bulb is also lighting up because I've not disconnected that, which actually gives me an idea. Because let's simulate going in reverse, which as we know, all we're doing is reversing the polarity. If I turn the battery around, the LED won't light up, but the incandescent bulb will, as you can see. So I could mount both the bulbs, and then at least in reverse, I will have some sort of headlight. I could possibly mount two LEDs, but reverse the polarity in one of them, but we're getting overly complicated. And once we've done that, what we could do for the rear bulb which it doesn't really have a spot for a rear bulb, but I might mount it through there in that little hole in the, the back door. If I was to stick a red LED in there, all I would have to do is wire the red LED opposite to this one. So the chassis would be the negative and the, the positive would be the positive, whatever. You know what I mean? We can just reverse the LED for the red one so that when it goes in reverse, the red light comes on and the front one doesn't. Right, time to break out the soldering iron, I guess, because I do need to mount this a bit more permanent rather than just wrapping the wire around the resistor wire. Let's begin by prepping our LED and resistor. Now, I'm going to use a brand new LED because I've been testing that other one quite a lot and I might as well start afresh on a brand new resistor. So we need to connect the resistor to either side of the LED, it doesn't matter which side, but you can see a definite difference in size there. Longer one is positive normally, and the shorter one is the negative normally. Okay, let's, um, I'm going to chop a little bit of the resistor wire off. We don't need it to be that long. It's just going to get in the way. Dip that in some flux. And the same with the LED. A little bit of flux, never hurt anyone. I strongly advise getting one of these handy helper jobs. Oh, 
Awesome. This shouldn't take too much heat because they are tiny. One side down. For the other side, I'm actually just going to salvage some wire off of the the local itself. There's tons of it here, wrapped round and round. And again, just for now, we are just going to wire up the the new LED, and we can always add the incandescent back in later. And I will address this this weird chassis wire at a later date. I just want to make sure this is all going to work in theory. Let's go with uh, as much wide as possible, really. Let's snip it off here. And I'm also going to be adding a little bit of heat shrink tubing. Slightly bigger than that, because I want it to go over the, the resistor as well. I'll get that in a sec. Let's make sure this one goes over. I don't have a black tube the right diameter. Okay, so that will slide over the whole lot and keep it all nice and tidy. So, strip this one a little bit. Strip this one a little bit. One side is going to go to the resistor, one side is going to go to the other side of the LED. Flux. Give them some tinning. fumbling about here when I've got a perfectly good third hand. Right, let us join these together. But not until I put the heat shrink on, because that would have been a disaster. I'm going to cut it down to a bit there. Otherwise, there's otherwise there's going to be exposed wires. Yes, I put the flux in the wrong thing. There we go. Oh, let's see if the, uh, the other side gives me as much grief. That was a nightmare. Oh. 
Now what you probably noticed that I didn't do was check the polarity. For all I know, when this goes forward, that light's not going to come on. But that's okay, because I can just desolder these two wires, swap it around. Let's do a little check with our battery. And wouldn't you Adam and believe it, I've gone the wrong way. I had a 50-50 shot and I got it wrong. Tell you what's weird though, I can see the LED flickering, even though it's going forward. But it definitely only comes on properly in reverse. So annoying. Let me swap them around and I'll see you in a sec. Okay, let's try that again. Forwards, light is coming on. Okay, so now how do we wire up the back light? I think what I'll do is put this together just now, make sure it works going around the track, and then hardwire very similar wiring to the back as we've got to the front. Solder on something there, but I really want to have a bit more of a permanent ground to the chassis, unlike this annoying wire thing. So let me get this together, shrink these tubes on, cover all that nasty bare wire. Or as much of it as possible. Oh, I didn't need that much. That was silly. Oh, well. And we can just shrink this with our soldering iron. Just roll it over the top. Don't need to go and get a lighter. You've got a perfectly good heating device right here. Just don't hold it on for too long or it will burn. Now we can slot that into that hole, which I've already checked, and it fits perfectly, so it shouldn't pop out. Nice. Put this all back together. Make sure that the wires aren't foul in your drive gears. And that should be... Ready to rock and rumble. Okay, I'd obviously have to take care of the wiring down there because it's sticking out through the bottom. Let me just poke that away. It's all trial and error, boys and girls. Mostly error for me. Okay, that'll do it for now. Let's see if it works. Right then, let's give her some power, see what happens. Ooh, that's nice. And it's kind of acting like a DCC local in that it's coming on quite bright without too much power. Let's speed it up a little bit, get her moving. I know it looked like the light went off there, but it's just modern cameras don't like digital lights. Let's see it go round the track.
Now, I know you purists out there will be shaking your heads in dismay, but remember this layout is not built around any particular era. It's kind of a modernish era. So it is built around an era. Anyway, it's more of a modern layout with older locos and trains on it, but any trains that appear on this layout will have been refurbished. So yeah, they didn't have LED lights back in the 50s when that loco was made, but they do now, and that's why it's modernised, and I think it looks great. Right, let me crack on and get the rear red light wired up, and I'll let you see how it looks in a final video cut at the end. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Solar Garage, who actually supplied me with those little LEDs. I'm going to be ordering a lot more now that I know how to use them. Take care, everyone. See you soon.